couldn't join us tonight um, because as I say we discovered anybody wants to come live with you on TikTok you need a thousand followers which um, most of these people aren't on TikTok and they agreed to come live they only agreed to basically sign up and join TikTok so I'm really afraid about I'm um, sorry about that um, really am so what I'll do is discuss thing I, I, we all got here and I was all excited thinking great I'm gonna enjoy listening to this because she's had 20 years of them I've watched many so if you want to watch and you learn a lot I must admit if you want to watch some so you have an idea what it's like or what people what kind of lives and what you know they go through and what they see and what they remove and there's a woman called Alba Weinman on YouTube she shares obviously people's consent and they edit some things out but she does so you watch the past life regressions and you can hear them and see what they go through see how they remove attachments and heal you know what it's amazing when you when you're finished a lot of healing so really go and watch alba weinman okay she's on youtube you'll find her past life regression there's another young girl that does it is called um rising phoenix aurora she's different she has a different style so some of you will resonate with alba weinman style and some of you will prefer Aurora. She's she's far more modern. So she's dealing with implants and, and technology and archons and that sort of thing. Alba Weinman doesn't seem to bump into that as much. So it's very interesting. They're very different, both of them. And they both share past life regressions, you know, live. They do, they, they actually film. Because everything's done online now. You don't have to go to see someone physically anymore. They can, it's, what they do is put you into a deep trance meditation. That's why you, when they say you connect to your higher self, which is your soul, which is your consciousness, which is not part of you, actually. So it's amazing. When you, when you go through it, you go into a deep uh, meditation trance and you're able to see and you, re you relive those lives. And it, your soul will take you and then that person is experienced enough, they guide you to see what, what your soul is trying to show you and why. They ask them why they're showing you this life. What, what, what what's in, depends. So you'll learn a lot, and it's fascinating watching. I mean, then you get an idea of what carnations you can actually have. It's really amazing. You can see all the kinds of beings you can be, lives you've had here, um, lives you had on other planets, because it's it's infinite. Even if you measure with a scalar, um, there's a, a couple that I've asked to come on live, which we discovered. They don't have a TikTok, though. So they're happy to do a live with me for you, but it will be done on their YouTube. So I will notify you we'll be doing a live probably in a month's time with them. They have a machine. They've invented a machine which reads life force energy scalar. It's amazing what they've discovered. So that is quite interesting. So that's going to be a good one. It looks, That's the future technology. Everything is going that way. Everything is frequency and energy. So that you will learn a lot about this machine, how it reads, what it can tell. It's incredible what it can pick up. So we'll do that. So those are people you can go and watch for now, okay? And then you'll see it's infinite. If you read the universe or source, it's infinity. There is no, there's no reading. There's no frequency. The frequency, there's just, you can't take a reading. So we know uh, source, the divine, is infinite. There is no reading. So if you try and read what you would say God or source, it's just, there's no, it's just infinite. It just gives you, so we know it's infinite. The universe source, the life creation is absolutely infinite. And that, um, you can imagine the possibilities out there. I was meditating on today, just amazed on life itself, just life. The fact that we are alive, a carnation, you know, everything, planets, whatever. It's just, it's just as I say, it's mind boggling. The sky, the earth, everything is, everything is consciousness. And it's just consciousness and energy, basically. When you die, you'll discover that because you are just energy. You're a light body, you're energy, and, and you're conscious. You retain your consciousness, your awareness as such, completely aware of everything. So it's it's actually incredible. And when you start listening to those past lives, then you actually see that mind, it's mind boggling. I mean, fairies, dragons, angels, um, mermen, uh, uh, all kinds of aliens and planets. And it's bloody mind boggling. But what's really mind boggling, if your soul takes you to one of those, I went through one. And that's really weird. Because I would, I have never seen one of these beings before. I couldn't have described it. I looked at myself and I described exactly, I saw what I looked like, exactly. And I've got it recorded. You can, they record it for you. So your aggressions are recorded. So you can have them to replay and listen to down the line. They record it for you. So you keep that, which is amazing. 
And then I went on, you know, okay, well, thinking, mm, it's a bit... And I went on to listen to some other, those regressions. I found those channels and I watched hers and I was like, oh my gosh. And I saw pictures. People have drawn some of these aliens. And I was like, oh my gosh, I was one of those. That's me. And I saw it. I mean, I would never have, couldn't have made up this thing, whatever it was. I, I was living. I was this thing. And then I went on. It was a way life. And there I was listening to other people, you know, being this cre this alien. And it was like, oh, wow. <laughs> and I've seen pictures. that That's exactly, that's right. I knew it was right because I, you know, had seen it and lived it. And there people were drawing, you know, this is what this alien looks like. And I was like, yeah, I know. <laughs> but I can tell you what it felt like and what the skin looked like. It was really strange. But I discovered I was a, a merman. This is interesting. I don't know what planet it was. Dan asked me, which is sad because when you finished, you wish they would ask more things. Like, first of all, your name. So if you could have a reincarnation here, like I had one, I lost a husband in the First World War. I would have liked it if she had asked the man's name and, you know, surname. So I could have looked up in the records. Because you, in this, when you're going back, you're living the life. So I see his face, everything. So if I'd gone back and looked up, you know, records or ancestry or whatever, you know, all journalists that had died in the Second First World War, I would have recognized his face and I would, oh my gosh, that was my husband. So you can actually prove or verify, not that you, you live it, you know it's true. But you will be able to, in 3D, you know, go look up and you'll realize, oh my gosh, that was me. I died in this and that year. So, you know, for people that are skeptical, it's amazing. So I was a merman. That was really strange. I laughed at myself because I was a man. But yes, your soul doesn't know sex. So you, you incarnate as a man, as a woman, as a man, as a woman, as a being, as a... Some people have been fairies, have been... I mean, really, it's just it's like, wow, it's amazing. Um, other planets, other lives, some kind of little... is all. It's just... That's what I was thinking today in my meditation. It is infinite. So we have no clue. This is just some of the things in this universe that we are. But there's other universes. So can you just imagine... The types of lives and species and shapes of these beings and aliens and life forms and who knows and planets. Because this planet that I was on as a merman, the sky, like when I looked it up, the sky wasn't blue like ours. It was like kind of purple. So that was strange. Um, when I looked up, I was explaining it. This, uh, the sky was purple. The sky wasn't here. So I knew I wasn't on Earth. That's for sure. Because I was like, oh. The sky is purple. They were asking, you know, what, you know, what it looks like, whatever. But uh, we were lived underwater. It was really fascinating. But you don't look like a mermaid like the, that we've been seen. You know, the, the Walt Disney movies and everything. It isn't that kind of mermaid. You don't look like that. So I was a merman. And I had these strange things out of my head. They were, it wasn't hair and it wasn't, it wasn't um, fins. It was like, almost like an antenna. That you had like antennas, like these... How do you describe it if you've never seen it yourself and the first time you know you you actually this thing? Your body, yes, it was like a, uh, it was like rainbow colors as well. My skin or my scales sort of kind of, it wasn't really, I don't know what it was, if you had scales or something, but it was actually rainbow colored. So I had this sort of rainbow color lower part of my body. I was a man. Um, and my head, I had these funny like, they looked like, bits like this, like an antenna type thing, like maybe they were, maybe they're kind of sensors or something, fish, I don't know, you know, whatever, who knows, <laughs> bloody hell, it was just, it was mind bang. I laughed at myself, I looked down, oh my gosh, I'm a man, and oh, it was really weird, and then I've been, I was in ancient Ireland, and I've been, I've been to Egypt, and my meditations, I actually saw it quite a few times, and I walked around, um, and I remember, I saw myself teleporting, we used to teleport, there were stargates, and I see, you have actually can find, if you go and look on the internet, you'll find ancient pictures, photographs, and books as well, which wasn't hidden. When they discovered Egypt, they found teleports, like these big circle things. Now, in my one meditation, I was, I've been, I've been many times in Egypt, and I've walked around. It's, it's weird. If you astral project, you're physically walking on the ground. You can hear and feel and smell and taste. It's like everything. It's really strange. And I walked around Egypt before its destruction in its heyday. And then I saw myself as a female in Egypt. And I was obviously quite high up because I was well dressed and I was walking through the pyramids. It's really strange. I was walking through the pyramids and I had this blue robe on. And I carried on walking and then I went downstairs somewhere. I don't know if it was under the Sphinx or where it was, but I went down a tunnel and then I went into it. It was a long tunnel, dark. I went quite a long way, I walked into this long tunnel. At the end of the tunnel, there was a circle. 
it came into a circular room. Now everything is frequency. This is how they levitated and teleport. It's frequency. This is how the, the monks in the old days, using those big horns, could actually levitate rocks. That was also quietly removed those pictures and, and shushed up so people wouldn't know that the monks were doing it. And there was a gentleman from England that went there in the 1800s and documented this and he was quickly, everything was taken away from pictures and quietened up. But I think that it's leaked out now, the stories, and you can get them on YouTube. But the photographs were taken from the Smithsonian. All these things have all, you know, have always been hidden. All the, even the mummies they found, alien mummies have been, you know, they've got them. They've got proof of all this, proof of the, you know, the giants and their bodies and skulls. There's even old pictures. You can still find old photographs of this. Um, midgets, whatever they were, these little, there's tons of it. It's, there's proof that they actually lived here. There's physical proof, um, mummies and skeletons and things on the planet. It's just at the bottom of the Smithsonian. Anyway, to get back to what happened, I walked into this long tunnel and at the end there was a, it was round, circular, so it was obviously resonate, obviously resonate, it was obviously a resonant sort of room and it was round and this, whatever that sort of stargate, it was circular, the floor was circular and I stood in the middle and we teleported. I was like, oh, so when I knew it, we, so I knew exactly what I was doing, it was like I just knew what I was doing and we teleported. Now, Secondly, well, I mean, many lives here. I was, I was in, I was a priest, priestess, in uh, the Peru. So I presume it was a Mayan times. Who ever lived there? The um, sort of Machu Picchu in that whole area, the Valley of the Gods. I was a priestess there. I've seen. I ended up, you know, in my trips. I just sit there and I poof, I go, and I ended up where well, next minute I'm in Peru and I'm whatever. Strangest things I've, I go and see. So I was in Peru. And I remember watching on YouTube one day, I went and um, just, just out of interest sake, I was following some, you know, looking at the ancient sites and people are going there and with their drones and videoing everything and for tourists and stuff. And some guy was watching here, I never, and I haven't in this life ever been to Machu Picchu or Peru, but I've seen plenty. I know a lot of things that are even hidden that they haven't been discovered yet. And you know, they come through me for the meditations. So I know, I've, yeah where some of these things are underground, put it that way, and a lot of things are. It's like I know where they are now. And I sat there, and I was watching this video, and this man had a drone, and he took a drone, he went up to Machu Picchu and threw this drone up, but next minute the drone went up, and I wasn't focusing on Machu Picchu. At the top, above the ruins of Machu Picchu, there's a, there's a peak, it looks like it's the tallest peak. So Machu Picchu's here, and there's a little peak just basically that rises above it, and there's stairs or something going up, to this little peak. When the drone flew up, my attention immediately went to that peak and I zoomed in on the peak. I don't know why, my, my focus just went to that peak and I saw three, looks like sort of um, stone. You've seen them, there are many in Peru as well. They look like doors carved into stones. It's just a carving of a shape of a door in a stone. Now those are portals, no joke. I just knew it. They said, they, they, scientists or these explorers reckon they were used as for teleportation. I can tell you they were. I remember. It was the minute I saw that drone footage go up. I wasn't even looking at Machu Picchu. I looked over there and I just knew something was there. It was familiar to me. And the minute that camera in the distance I caught looks like three outlines of it. I knew exactly. We used to teleport. We'd come through those doors. So just it just looks like an indentation carved into the stones. Those That's where we came through. But not only did we be able to teleport, we used to be able to teleport to the planet, to these different sacred sites, because they were energy, energy points, their frequency. And that's why they were built like that, resonant. I remember doing that. So we teleported to different parts of the planet, plus we could go to other planets. So we would be able to leave this planet or this dimension or frequency, whatever, this dimension, density. But we could also then, you know, instantly travel to from Egypt to Machu Picchu or whatever. That I know, we can do it. If you restore those things, you have the right frequency or resonance around you. At the moment our government says they've just, they've been doing it for a long time. But I saw in the mainstream media, they're saying, oh, we've just now been able to teleport people 40 kilometers successfully without, you know, losing them or whatever. This is technology, that's nonsense. They've been doing it for a while. They managed, they figured out we've got technology hundreds of years past, you know, that you're, you're aware of. We've got, we're way ahead that mainstream people and the mainstream people are actually aware of what they've got. They're way ahead. They've been teleporting for a long time. They've got, yes, they discovered those, 
in space. I think in the 1980s someone discovered them. I can't remember what they're called. Not drops. Um, like wormholes. Where you can, they are, they are almost like a direct link to another planet. So if you find those, they discovered it in the 80s. That science, some scientists found it, which is factual. So there's certain parts here. It's like, it's like the Bermuda Triangle. It's like a vortex. You get to that and you're immediately taken. So they, but they go to certain things. There's one for the moon. There's one for, the Mar, for Mars. And they're going to Mars. They've been going to Mars from here like that. Not via SpaceX and not via spaceships. You can teleport to Mars directly. It's like a, almost like a direct shoot. They have those, but that's, you know, secret sort of military things. But that's, they've been doing that. But we did that and we're able to do that. You don't need technology. We are able, all of us, to teleport as we are able to levitate. If you ask your soul, and if, it's, if, you're able, if you focus on it enough, and ask your soul to show you, to remember, because you remember, it's just remembering, you know it's there, the information's there. Know you know it. Ask them to just go, ask yourself to show you yourself doing it. And I've seen myself doing it as well. Because we're energy, so we're able to change the shape of our energy, make ourselves into raindrops, water, you know, whatever form we want to. And that's it. But it's the right frequency. Because we're on a lower density and we're not, at the moment, we don't hold enough frequency in our bodies in this density. So this is why we're not doing it. When the planet picks up enough, we're holding a high enough frequency and light on the planet as we're going up now, which we are, we will be able to do it no problem. But I'm sure if you have the right crystals and you know how to set the crystals up, because that's frequency, that's why we had Stonehenge and things like that. There's nothing, they weren't sites to go and pray at. These were technology. Our pyramids and everything is actually technology. They're not ornaments and they weren't, they weren't temples and things. They are almost machines. They're frequency. They're set up at certain frequencies. But somebody purposely destroyed them and interfered with them and moved the rocks, put smaller runs around. They've in, they interrupted them they purposely. They blocked them so they wouldn't do that. If we remember, which we all can, all go back and view it yourself, or ask them to show your soul to show you how to set up, you know, the portal, to make a portal. That's what you're doing. You can create your own portal with your own crystals. That's all you need. Sound or crystals. So you need sound resonance or crystals, and you can teleport. You just got to make sure you know where you're teleporting to. That's what we've forgotten. We, but... If you, if you focus on it, if it's something your heart really desires and it's your purpose on earth here to get us back, lead the humanity back to the future and not, you know, we've been stuck in, they've got technology, we should be hundreds of years ahead, which they've kept from the public. And we've been living hundreds of years in, you know, we still, we haven't progressed really much in the last hundred or so years because they've hidden the technology from us. It's only been, the, you know, military and special ops or whatever else, you know, it's been, it's been kept for control, so they have money, that's why you pay electricity, you don't even need to pay for electricity, it's absolute nonsense, it's free, we've got the ether, you're able to, you'd be able to harvest life force energy, like all the planets, and they've got the technology, so yes, it's interesting, that's something we can do, and I, we, and I remember doing it, I've seen it, so it's a matter of you having to set, if you want to teleport yourself somewhere, which I think all of us will be doing in the future, you won't need passports, you won't need, you know, paying for aeroplane or any of that nonsense or a flying car because you actually are the technology it's holding your holding the frequency and creating that frequency around you which you can do like they did with stones it's resonance or crystals so that's why they were round the chambers are round and if you go into some of these sacred sites and you make a noise or you sing it resonates at a certain frequency the one in malta i think resonates at one 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 but they've been altered they, have, they were actually purposely um, pulled down so they hold a lower frequency. And if you do the readings, you can actually see when they were created, they would have, some of these things were resonating at a thousand. The frequency was a thousand when they were created. Or That's a guess. We're not sure of the dates because the dates are all wrong. At the moment, they're resonating at 400 or something because they were interfered with. They removed things. They moved some of the stones purposely. They did this. This was the dark. Um, you know, they took over the planet, basically. The darker beings, they've, you know, kind of manipulated humans and the planet for a long time. But that's neither there, as I say, there's no good or bad, because you were all one. 
and your soul doesn't know the difference between six, between red, it is nothing. We, you, we are all connected. Everything is connected. You're connected. The water, and we're all interconnected. It's like a great ecosystem on earth. We don't realize. We take it for granted. Me talking, breathing, because it's something you do naturally. You, you take air for granted, which we've poisoned and put nanoparticles in and whatever. The water. We are all connected. And if we work together properly, perfect. We have this incredible planet. The water is consciousness. The planet's conscious. The everything. Stones are conscious, and they are actually the guardians. They're the guardians of our history. They are protecting. So what people, what we did in the old days, is we stored the information in the rocks. So the rocks have actually are hiding our history and blocking it. And a lot of the beings back then, when it fell, hid a lot of the information technology and in, at a certain frequency in the rocks until we reach that level. That's interesting. And I've dropped into it once. I tried to view something. I can't remember what it was. I went back and I tried to view something to do with our history. And I've done a lot. I've seen lots of our history. Our history books are complete rubbish. You can throw them in the dustbin. The dates and what they've told us is absolute nonsense. If you go and do this for yourself, and you, you, even if you go and search it online and you're interested, your focus and your intention and your thing is on that, and your heart is pure and a good intent, they'll show you. And I was trying to, I've been seeing many things. I've gone right back, not willingly, I just that, because I think I was interested in wanting to know and searching and looking and uh, documentaries and whatever else. And you know it's nonsense what we've been told. And often I sat there and they showed me one stage quite a few of the past. I got taken back way back to just after we fell, to the fall of Atlantis, all kinds of things. But I, got, I ended up going somewhere and I wanted to ask something. And I, next minute I ended up in the middle of a rock. Really. I was, and I'm thinking, what the hell am I doing here? I'm sitting in a rock. And they asked what I wanted. And they wouldn't, let, they wouldn't give me access to the information or knowledge. So this, as I say, it's been, it's been stored for a reason. It was kept. So a lot of some of our history was hidden from us and blocked. Actually, wiped, they tried to wipe it out. It has been wiped and completely altered and changed. They've given you a history and a picture that they wanted you to see. That's not our real history at all, actually. It's, most people have forgotten. But I found that out. Our rocks carry a lot of our secrets. And they are, seems like guardians. You can communicate with them. They have consciousness. Think of our rocks as computers. As a, as a, you can actually program them. Same with your crystals. You program your crystals to hold a frequency. We just forgotten the sacred geometry and how to read frequencies. Because if we can see them and read them, we able then to make that teleport, that uh, grid. Because you're able to see the frequency, you're able to see, okay, my free, you need to do this, move that rock there to get the frequency right. We at the moment as humans aren't able to see the frequency. I'm working on it. You ask for it, you ask whatever you want, you'll get it. I can hear them and I can feel energies. I can feel frequencies and I can feel the energies. Absolutely. I can absolutely feel electricity, actually. It's, hard. it's not fun, I must admit, not all the time. But you're able to feel the frequencies. You're able to sense them. You can feel them. And it's, but if we're able to see them, like you can with auric, in someone's auric field, you can actually see. You need to see, which is the, which is the energy field. That's what you're reading. It shows us colors, right? Now we're able to see them. We're able to, if we're able to read them, so I can see, say I look at yours and yours is blue and I can see, okay, well, that's at 200 or that's at 500. If you know you need to build yourself a, a stone grid to teleport and it needs to be a thousand frequency. If you're able to visually see that, you know, okay, I need to put more in to, to increase the frequency. That's all. Well, a lot of these beings are able to do that. Your color as well, they read it, they see it, they see your energy. Your heart, and I've seen it in beings as well, they can tell if your heart is good and your intent is good. They will disclose information to you and not information to you, gathering on your intent and your heart. So if your energy is pure, your energy purity, which that machine can read, there's people I'm going to do a show for you for, they're able to read your energy purity, your frequency, everything. Now these beings can do that, which is amazing. They're lovely. So they can read, yeah. So if you haven't got pure intent, your frequency is not good, whatever else, you can't fool them. And you can actually see some of them. I've seen the energy is horrible, very dark, and there was red, 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 red. Now everything is energy and consciousness. Even your computers, our technology, our AI, artificial intelligence, has a frequency. 
and it's if it's if it's been made by somebody with negative intent for death, destruction, control, which is most military things are, you can guarantee that thing has got a nasty consciousness. It's a dark AI. It's got a very negative intent and negative frequency, which most of these most technology on this planet has because it was invented with negative, with a, with the idea of control, manipulation and control of the population, or destruction, you know, wars or whatever. So they haven't. But you can view some of these things, and I've seen some of these beings, and they've got a very dark intent, and their energy is very dark. They had their whole thing around them was just red, absolutely red. So you get to those, you try and access some of this information I found from some of these things like rocks. You hit a, they will actually just stop. They put a block up, and they say no, they won't let you in. I found that fascinating. So it depends. But some beings, absolutely. Because remember, also our frequency goes up and down. You know, we knew it. So to maintain it, you're able to maintain a stable frequency. You, you can really spike high some days, and then you can drop. It does that. But when you're on a very high frequency, you get access to far more, obviously, because you, you're resonating at the same frequency as them. So you get access to planets and beings with much, much higher consciousness. I mean, way above us. Wow. They, they are in complete unity consciousness absolute they don't there's no such thing as separation they don't even they don't even see sex as separate they don't have names there's no you know a name because they think it's strange or you know we are, we call ourselves earth or humans right they don't see themselves as a race as a, you know we are Arcturians or we are there's no such thing because we just won that's how much they see unity consciousness they do not see any division it's amazing. I, I don't know who they were. I don't ask me. I went to many. They took me up to show me the different levels of, I wouldn't say evolution, but consciousness. So they, I went up from inner earth. I don't know. It was a trip I took, and I didn't ask for it either. Most of the, I don't ask for any of these things. I just go, who knows why they show me or who, or I don't know. But looking at the unity consciousness thing, the one day on a trip I sat, as usual, not thinking, not asking, not, you know, just, I don't expect anything. I just sit and I'm just doing my thanks and this and that and happy and I'm resonating. I've resonated, at, you go, some really high ones. And I was in a very high frequency. And next minute I went up and it was like, I don't know who was trying to show me, but showing me, you know, what unity or what we should be, what, you know, what there is, basically. What we, and you were amazed how low we were. <laughs> Didn't you really see, you know, how low down we are on the evolution and the scale of consciousness and and unity and enlightenment actually as beings or as earth as humans in this density and they took me i went to inner earth and that so inner earth is still quite low and we're looking at the fourth and fifth dimension it's still very low um consciousness and density as far as that whole you know, enlightenment and, and you as unity consciousness as, as yeah oneness as uh, whatever and then i went i don't ask me where they were i really i did it i I normally make, after my trips, I make my videos live so I don't forget because I do many. And then you, you, so I get all the details and I remember the colors and everything I see. So after those, I normally go on, I, just, I used to make my lives and tell my friends. I've shared them all. I can't remember them all. But I did go to somewhere in Earth. Then I went to some other planets. And I went to a, one of the highest ones I went to. Don't ask me which planet we were in beings, but they didn't have a physical form. Also, maybe it's because that's how I saw them. The density, they're very, it's a very high, very high density. Hell of a high frequency. So they I can't explain it. They didn't look solid like us, all right? I could see them. So it was like a light body, like you would see. So I could still see, you know, they had different features, you know, um, expression, character, you know, energies, different individuals like us. They were still individuals. You could still work out female form, male form, um, what they looked like sort of thing. Community based, no separation whatsoever. I can't remember all the de de details, but it was so hard to describe. It was so far from what we're living in. It was so hard to even comprehend the type of unity they have. That they would literally lay down the, if you wanted to kill them, right? They would literally say, here we are. They just exit their body and leave the body for you. You know, they don't see, they would not harm anything. Doesn't matter if it's a negative being, positive being, they don't see any separation. They are complete unity. They're amazing. Absolutely mind blowing. It was absolutely mind blowing. They are a mind blowing. So, yeah, wow, it was amazing. Energies and just the unity was just how they lived. 
and it, they don't, yeah it's strange it's it's a community there's no you still do not what you want but what you feel like so you know if you as a being because we're all individuals like art or like this you just this one's looking after the children and that's doing that and all life everything is one they see it is amazing they were, that was just mind-blowing that lot i don't know what planet they were on but the sun is another one the sun has got many portals uh, many beings on it the sun is busy it's not heat like you're told the sun is not hot it's just high frequency the sun according to the scalar readings of the machine the sun is at ten thousand frequency so that's why it seems hot the sun is not hot there's no heat coming from it it's just light and frequency very high frequency the sun I discovered had lots. That wasn't me either. I ended up there. The sun has a lot of beings on it. A lot of, um, like it seems to be like a portal, very busy planet. So lots of aliens and spaceships. And when I was up there, it was bloody busy. But what I also discovered is they got portals to other galaxies, not just this, our universe. So where we go, these planets we see in our universe, the Milky Way and all this stuff, that's it. The sun has access to other galaxies or other universes, not ours. So these beings are able to come in from other universes, like a portal, wherever they go. And I got taken on one, I don't know where, someone took me. Some beings took me to, to some other universe once. I don't know. I haven't a clue where it was. But there's, there's all interesting portals and, and wormholes and black holes. And, you, and out of this physical body, you can go through them all. That's what's amazing. So I thought, well, seeing I ruined the whole evening and I, you couldn't get to see the um, live or you couldn't get to speak to Andrea, who's done 20 years of past lives. I was really keen to ask her which was her most interesting past life she's done. <laughs> Not from, you know, I don't care on the third, you know, who the person was here, rich or famous, I don't care. But their, their, their actual regression part, who was the most interesting regression she's ever done, because that would be interesting to see. I've watched quite a few regressions, but I'd love to see which was the most interesting regression. I've seen people with some serious attachments they had onto them. I thought, wow, shame. They, whoa. Um, they really we know, were held in a very low frequency and these manipulated by these things. And Because we don't claim our, we don't realize we don't claim our sovereignty. We can say no. We have to say no on a soul level. No. Leave me alone. And don't have enemies. Don't pick, don't, don't. If you're looking to fight, oh, they dark, we light. You can, they'll be happy to play that game with you and fight with you. If you don't see, if you have no beef with any being, you know, because we say, oh, he's bad, that's evil, they're good, they're not. Because remember, they're also playing a role. Their souls dropping into that body. They also were created, the same source. So if you don't, if you know that, yes, they might be playing the dark, they might be, you know, negative towards us at the moment and wanting to wipe us out. But if you don't hold a personal thing and you don't want to fight um, beings or whatever else, you just... Treat them, see them as they are, treat them as respect. They ha you have no problems. But if you want to go and fight, that's that's free game out there. You're welcome to go and play in the demonic realm and fight them. That's, I did that for a bit. You can do all kinds of things. But you learn, you know. It depends on where you want to go. <laughs> but you learn. I think it's, it's just mind-boggling. I can't even begin to sort of go into the, the depth of it. and the. It's beyond our comprehension in this dimension, in this brain, in this density. And even being up there when you win as a spirit, our brain isn't able to comprehend everything at the same time. But when you're up with source, you see, like they say, it tells you in the Bible, you see and know everything, absolutely all at, at the same time. So I'm saying up there because I don't know where else to describe it. It's not anywhere, it's wherever. I don't know where it is. There's no place as such. But they say, when you're dead, when you go to source, all it is, whatever. What you see, and I described it because I've done a few trips. What you see, um, I'm just trying to think how you could put it in this brain, is everything. And I don't know how, I, it's weird to explain it. Because if you're sitting around the top of a mountain, right? You're focusing on something. You're focusing on one thing. This is how our brain works. This brain here, when you tapped into the, the human brain, right? The physical human brain. You are not able to focus on everything at the same time. You can't look there and look behind you and see the, you know, that planet and this thing. You're not, because that's your eye. This is where they are. When you up the source, it's incredible, because you are able to. It's. I've made a video about it on my Facebook page. I made all the trips and I try to put them in 
I made one video which wasn't relevant to it, but above that video, I put all the links to the videos and I went up the tunnel of light, I went to source, da da da, and then seeing, explaining how you die, what you see when you die, the whole bloody thing. But it's fascinating being up there because you literally do. It's incredible perspective. You are at peace. You have not, you realize nothing is bad, nothing is good. You have not, you just, you know, it's just is. That's just, that's just life. And you get to choose. I want to go and drop in there and play a uh, reptilian. I want to drop in there and play a Octurian. I'm going to drop to earth and play, you know, whatever. I just want to have fun on earth and, you know, eat, drink, get married, whatever. Whatever you bloody do. But what's amazing being up there is that you see everything. And I described it. it it's so hard to explain. You're able to see, say, like, I'm, okay, now, ooh, look at, you know, I'm looking at Mars and look at Earth and look at that. And then you want to say, I want to focus, okay, what's going on on Earth? All you do is put your attention on Earth and you can zoom in. It's like being able to zoom into Earth and then, oh, that looks interesting. And then I'll zoom into that family. What's going on there? Oh, okay, I'm going to connect. And that's strange because when you connect, it looks like you go down a tunnel. To drop back to Earth, it looks like you're going down a tunnel when you drop back into a womb. It, it's the weirdest thing to explain because that's why I say it's, it's strange. But you're able to. You're able to sit there, like on, can you imagine being source or God, right? To sit there and just, wherever it is, consciousness, you're conscious there, but of everything. And to just observe absolutely everything. And it's so exciting. You can't wait to come back. You think, oh my gosh, that looks exciting. I want to go and have some action. You know, drop into there. I'm going to go and, you know, connate there or whatever. That's why we do it. You just don't remember. You hear, you think, oh, life is terrible. This is, it's not. It's bloody awesome. There is no end to it. And you can never die. You do not die. So... But I explained that, and those are separate things. So yeah, it's it's mind-boggling, awesome. Um, but if you know nothing about this, you can watch some of those regressions. I mean, people that are on a very low consciousness, or haven't woken up yet, some of them, oh rubbish, how do you know they're not making it up? It's not real, it's whatever else. My daughter's one of them, I have a child that's like that. I said, I said, because, trust me, go and do it. You, no one's telling you. So they're not making it up. Someone's not putting it in your mind. They hypnotize you. You physically see it, feel it, describe yourself, live it. You cry. You feel the emotions, everything. You take on that character, that person, that personality. It's like, it's so you know you're not making it up. And secondly, when I was this merman thing, I also thought, oh my gosh, you know, you're right. Sure, this is a bit strange. I believed it, but still, I hadn't, you know, I never heard someone else describe it. And then I watched, I, I don't know which, it was Alba Weinman or someone's, I watched quite a few regressions, and one of these regressions, one of the one of the people's, uh, you know, in a regression, had exactly the described being a merman or mermaid. I think it was a woman, merman thing, exactly as I was. And I was like, oh my gosh, see, I knew it. So, but uh, I wish I'd asked which planet it was. Though they didn't ask which planet, definitely was on Earth. But a very peaceful life. I don't know if there were any predators there. Um, I didn't experience in my lifetime. We were never. It was absolutely peaceful. I died of an old, quite an old age as a being, as a merman. Um, I became like an elder. And it was lovely. Um, it was super amazing. Such an amazing, it was a really lovely existence. Oh, it was very peaceful. We lived strange, as kind of like a rock cave. Like It wasn't completely closed. So we lived in like this cave thing, and we ate some kind of grass, sea grass or seaweed. We lived off some sort of, it wasn't fish, other fish. We didn't eat other fish or any other, you know, living things. As mer people, this was strange, whatever we were, whatever the beings we were, we ate, it was like a grass, seaweed kind of grass stuff. That was our food. And how we had sort of lived was kind of in a rock face. So the rocks sort of went in like that, shelter. I suppose it was sheltered from the currents and whatever else, who knows. But we lived inside kind of a cave type thing. This is how we lived. Not closed off, we didn't have doors and things. But yeah, like hollowed, like hollowed rooms, you know, like cave rooms, yeah, open sort of caves, concaves. So this is how we lived as as a school of mermen, or like we had a community, kind of a, not a big pod, I would say, but we had a decent sized pod. And it was awesome. And the sky was not blue, so that was weird. But it was so cool to see other people in other regressions describing exactly the same beings. And the cool thing was that your skin is sort of like a fish. When you take a fish out of water, 
If you notice their skin, they, it really shines and like reflects their scales. But then if you leave them out, it goes all dry and dull. Well, your your skin or whatever it is you had there is a merman thing. It was it had reflect. It made rainbow colors. It was reflected as rainbow colors. And weird. These weird things on your head, whatever they were, like sort of. Maybe they were in senses that you could, you know, sense, I don't know, who knows. Pick up frequencies, waves, you know, energy, whatever they things were. There was a few of these things on my head. It's really odd. But anyway, that's probably the most, in I'm not going to go into all of them. There's too many lives. Um, but interesting, yeah. Very interesting. So there we are. I've rattled on enough. So go and look them up if you've never done it and you think it's absolutely hogwash. Well, it's all coming out and history will come out. And if you want to go yourself and see what it's like, remember what it's like, because you would have all come up the tunnel of light as well. If you've connected here, most of us have been in a dense sleep. We died, we didn't know what happens. We saw the light, oh, up the tunnel of light. Those of you that are doing astral projection and remote viewing, you are able to go, right, and decide, I want to go and see you, or you know, tell your soul, sh you know, show me a past life, or show, what, go back to the Second World War, or go and view my boyfriend like some young people are doing, whatever, in this timeline. If you remember, just that no one thinks about it, because you always think of past lives. So when you're viewing your past lives and things, and your intention or would go and view something, what you are viewing, you're asking for actually incarnation. You're not viewing. You can ask your higher self or your intent or the focus to go and view yourself before you incarnated, just before you incarnated, incarnated to this planet. And then you will see where you are. Most likely, come and tell me afterwards, you went up the tunnel of light. And if you did, I will know if you're being honest because I know what it is like. I went up the tunnel of light, the whole thing. I went, I went and astral traveled it, whatever, up the tunnel of light. And the souls that are waiting, the ones that, you know, anyway, it's a long story. Lots of souls in queue there at the moment because of what's going on in transition. So there's a huge amount of souls. They have to wait. They've been told to wait. The ones that aren't conscious because they don't realize they can, you know, do their own thing. So there's a lot of souls before you get up, halfway up the tunnel. Anyway, long story. But go up the tunnel of light, go and see yourselves as a soul, okay? And you will, it'll be awesome, you'll love it. So do your remote view, astral travel, take yourselves back, your intention, your mind, your thing, to as you were before you ha came into a human physical body. Go and see it. It is so freaking awesome being a spirit, and the colors are, because it's higher density, you see things differently. The colors are crystalline. It's amazing. It's so clear. It's just incredible, the colors. It's not like here. So go and... There's a challenge for all of you. Go and remote view or astral travel yourselves as a spirit before you came into a human body. All right? Or in another planet or another carnation. And you will just... Just that people don't think about it. If I can do all these things, you can do them. And I'm basically 60 in a year. So, hello. You guys have got you know, lots of fun ahead of you. All right, lovely people. It's awesome out there, tell you what. And it's infinite. And just, it's amazing. I mean, you just can't wait to get going. And that's what it is. When you're up there, it is. It's like, oh my gosh, you just want to, you know, you're watching everything and you, look, you focus on this planet and then you focus on that planet and whatever. It's just freaking awesome. And you have absolute peace because you know it's all good. It's all, you know, we just, what are you going to do? You live forever, right? That's what we do. We're energy. We can't be destroyed. So you live forever. So you'd be, you get pretty bored, time goes, there's no such thing as time. So you're not going to sit up a source all the time. After a while, you know, you know your family, your friend, your other soul family are going to say, oh, well, come on, let's go and do this. Or you make agreements, you plan. You agree with them to go, you know, go and play on whatever planet. If you want to play dark, I could suggest a few you don't want to go to that are very negative. <laughs> because, uh, yeah. There are a few negative, there are, we're not the only negative planet, there's some very negative uh, existences and beings out there as well. But they're on their own evolution path. They need to wake up on their own time. Anyway, sorry about our live tonight with a past life regression expert that she couldn't come on. And um, she's on here and I've shared the link on my page, on my TikTok page. I put her name there. So you're able to go to her page, you're able to follow her if you want. You can follow her. So she'll have enough th followers to be able to do a live, which will be fantastic. Otherwise, we'll make a live somewhere else. Um, we can't do it on TikTok until she has a thousand. But if you want to pass life regression, you know you can approach her in the meantime. Or you can just look it up on the internet. QHHT, regression, you know, person or regression therapist or whatever. 
and you know, I'm sure they'll pull up people in your area and then you can look at their websites and see how many, you know, regressions they've done, what they charge. And you can start there. But I'm now challenging you guys. Go and remote for yourself as a spirit without your body. You know, before, and it's just, her name is Andrea Fox. Okay, Andrea, F-O-U-L-K-E-S, 22. I've made a video because when we couldn't go live now, I made a video and it's on my timeline, on my TikTok page. You'll see my, my latest 60 second video and it's got her name there. All right. So she joined now to try and come on with me. So she's got two followers. Please. Otherwise, we'll do a live somewhere else. Just for her to, you know, just to, I, I wanted her to come on to explain to people that have never done a regression what it is, how she does it, what the process you go through, you know, in layman's terms, to really give, a, give us a bit more detail. That's why. Okay. Her name is Andrea Fox. F-O-U-L-K. Go look at my, go to my TikTok page. I put her name there, all right, on that video. Okay, on the text. All right, lovely people. I'll have to make a plan now because I lined up all these people to come live with me to share with you. I've got a star seed. Um, you know, that's actually, yes, connected, you know, anyway, straight from a ship here. Another lady that's got immense, immense, um, she channels these beings and she's she immense experience with other non-human beings, aliens. Then a lady with the loads of Akashic Records um, and she's fantastic. She does readings, she does healing, she does Akashic Records, also working with people's animals. So she was going to come on and do the whole Akashic Records, explain the do's and don'ts and, you know, there's universal laws as well as a soul's free will. You're not allowed to, you know, intervene and break so there's certain things you can't do as far as it goes to other people. Um, so I, and I'm psychic and a lot of things. I had lots of people lined up because people asking questions and you know wanting to know about the synchronicities, wanting to know about this. So I had all these people that had agreed to come on to share with everybody. So we will make a plan. But I shall notify my followers on my TikTok page. We will be, if I'm doing one, we will do lives on Facebook. I'll give, I'll give you a time, we'll do it public. And you can watch us live if they haven't got anything else. Or I'll tell you, we'll be the videos will be on YouTube for you to watch. You know, on covering this, the video will be on wherever. So I'll make a plan because so many people on TikTok have been asking me. Um, so I shall definitely notify them if they cannot do lives with me here, where they can watch the lives, and we'll ask all the questions. And as the questions come in, more people ask me. I'll do that. How do you know if you're a star seed? Go and do a past life regression. And your Akashic Records, you probably all had lives there. But what people, want, when they say, how do I know if I'm a star seed? People wanting to know if they came into this life from another planet. We all did, actually. But I mean, now, to go and help, I don't know. That you have to ask. Um, you know, some, some connected straight here from other planets to help us in human bodies. And human, there's many walking among you that just don't look, some are, you know, able to change the shape of theirs. So they look human, but they're not. But some are connected into human bodies. They came here in agreement to drop into this. Must be very painful coming from a high, very high frequency and density to drop into this. It's very painful, very low frequency and density. So yes, they did. My friend is one of them. And when she had a near-death experience at the age of two, instead of going to source or heaven, she went straight to the spaceship. <laughs> Boing! <laughs> and a two-year-old wouldn't have thought that up. In those days, they didn't have TV, internet, no one was talking about UFOs, so she sure didn't imagine it. She found herself when she you know, had a near-death experience and floated up in a spaceship. And she, she knows she is. She has lots of communication with them. She's been dealing with them. So she was going to come on, but uh, we'll probably do it. What we'll do is a live probably on her channel. She's got a YouTube channel. We'll probably do a recorded. Uh, or we'll have to do, if we want to go live, we can, we can go live on Facebook. Um, otherwise, we'll have to do a recorded Zoom recording and, and upload it to the, her YouTube channel and my YouTube channel because they haven't got TikTok accounts. And so even if they opened a TikTok account like Andrea now, you have to have a thousand followers. So they wouldn't be able to do a live with me here, which is a pity. So she is, yes, she's been working with them. They give her a lot of information and help and guidance, sacred geometry, frequencies, um, and she's often up and down, you know, on her trips. She's often she's in the spaceship, she's down, she gets to them. So she's here helping Earth. 
and we've had a few carnations together, I reckon, because we were we we, we just we found each other. So we've we've had a few carnations, but way back, um, early days on planet Earth, uh, Atlantis was one of them. <laughs> so we were there together in Atlantis, I reckon. But you know, I can't. You can't go and spy on somebody else's carnation. That's another thing. So you're not allowed to go and ask. When, if you do your aggression, you know, and the person's there in that life, yes, you will recognize their eyes. This, their eyes are this. You can tell a soul's eyes. But you're not allowed to go and ask, was that person, you know, going like their cash records and go and spy or ask, you know, about them. You have to get their permission, yeah. But we definitely have, we definitely are um, soul family because, you know, you're drawn to certain people. And we have, we've had like many, you know, done a few things together, yeah. So, we, oh, well, how are we working together? I've seen her up on a ship as well. I've been up to ships and I've seen her there. Um, so maybe we've got a parallel life together or a future life. Who knows? There's no such time. You know, they're all, if you think there's no such thing as time, they're all existing at now. Your parallel, your past, your future, it is only now. So we are living together. We've shared lives together, put it that way. That's for sure. All right, beautiful people. I wish you a good evening, and I'm so sorry that she couldn't come on and, and talk about all her past life experiences and regression she's done. And But I'll make a plan, and we'll do the video, 